Okay, the aim here is to create what we call an interpolating polynomial from our data. So the data that we started with is on the first page here. So we had horizontal distance from a datum and we measured the height from that as well. And now what we want to be able to do is to interpolate between these points. So we know the actual height at 30 metres and the actual height at 80 metres. But what's happening if the height was, say, 50 metres? If the distance was 50 metres, what would the height be? We want to be able to work out those in between points with better than just a linear approximation between the points. So, and what we can do is we can create a interpolating polynomial which goes to the difference that we require. And so, <coughs> for example, this would give us just a, a linear approximation, it would give us the, just the first point approximation, a linear approximation between two points. Here we start worrying about the quadratics and cubics, so the further we take this polynomial, the more data we take into account. Okay, and the way that we do it is we're trying to find the value at a particular point, and the point is defined in this manner here, where x0 is the pivot value, the value immediately in front of the point of interest. So in the example we're going to do, we're worrying about what's happening at 50 metres. So 50 metres is between 30 and 80, so our pivot point must be 30, it's the point which is just in front. So our pivot point in the example we're going to be doing is 30 metres. Okay. <coughs> h is the interval distance, so the distance between consecutive x values. So our x values are all 50 apart. So h is going to be 50. And p is the proportion of the way through the interval we're working on. So we want to go from 50, we start at 30 and want to get up to 50. So this 50 here is that 50. And the interval width is 50 as well, which is that one. So the fact that those two numbers are both the same, in this case, is just a fluke, which is 20 over 50 is 0 0.4. Okay, so that gives us the values for x and what h uh, and p. And now we can stick those into this polynomial up here. So this tells us that the value of the function at our point we're trying to find, which is 50, because that's x naught is 30 plus 0.4 of 50, 0.4 of 50 is another 20, so it's the value at the point 50, which is what we're trying to find, is f of x0, well x0 is 30, plus p times the first difference based on 30, plus p times p minus 1 over 2, based on the second difference, etc. Okay, so, blah, 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 blah. <coughs> so let's, let's start working, it gets the numbers off our table. So from our table, f of 30 is just equal to 20, and the differences we're going to use are the differences down this row here. So these are the differences that are associated with 30, so we've got, we can go up to a fourth order difference. Okay, so <coughs> our actual function value is 20, plus 0 0.4 lots of the first difference. Well, the first difference was 8. Plus this term here is 0 0.4, 4 minus 1 over times the second difference, which was 4. Plus the next term, which is 0 0.4 times 0 0.4 minus 1 times 0 0.4 minus 2 on 3 factorial, which is 6, times the third difference, which was negative 2, plus, we'll do one more term, so we've got four differences, will be 0 0.4 times 0 0.4 minus 1, which will be negative 0 0.6, just trying to save a bit of space here, plus 0 0.4 minus 2, which will be negative 1.6, plus 0 0.4 minus 3, which will be negative 2.6, one of the four factorial, which is 24, times the fourth difference, which is 2, if you look back on that previous table. <coughs> and then it's just a matter of crunching numbers in the calculator, and if you do that, you, I think you'll find it comes out to be 22.51. Okay, so when we go 0.4 of the difference between 30 and 80, our answer is going to come out to be 22.51.
Okay. Whereas if we just did 0.4, the difference between these two, this is 8.4 of that is 3.2, you'd come up with 23.2. So 22.5 is significantly different, and that's because it's taking into account what happens after it goes past that point. The difference, uh, rate of difference drops off somewhat, or changes, and the estimation is that at that point you'd have a better, now 22.5 is a better estimation than 23.2. Okay, so that's how you use the um, Newton-Gregory difference tables to make a, uh, an estimation at a point.